On this episode of K-Pop RC, we scan my face. Scan some Lexan and put this little unit to the test. This is the Ferret Pro 3D scanner, the latest scanner offering from Creality. Let's see if I can incorporate this tool into my 3D printing RC parts workflow. I should mention this is not a paid advertisement for Creality, but they did send me this unit for review. Thanks, Creality. On this channel, we make a ton of 3D printed content. From fully printed cages for these RC drifters to full freaking chassis, to full camera rigs. Look at this burnout car from Cletus McFarland, the neighbor. Fully working active suspension, all 3D printed. We make a lot of cool projects here at K-Pop RC and that's exactly why you should subscribe. Here's how Ferret Pro 3D Scanner arrives from Creality. Everything these days seems to be coming in these zip up dedicated cases. Now I can keep all these generic adapters in one spot. Nice going Creality, all right. Yeah, here you can see Creality has assembled a wide array of setup options to allow for multiple ways to communicate with your computing device, whether that be PC, Mac, or phone. The actual scanner itself is quite a small unit. It is fully aluminum and it has a glass front face. Man, also it's got locking USB-C cables that actually screw right into the device, making sure that it doesn't disconnect while scanning. Check it out here. Great job. Great job! <laughs> We've got full-out tripod legs attached to a USB charged battery handle that powers the whole thing in wireless mode. Oh my god. Attached to a smartphone clamp that is also attached to a Wi-Fi 6 wireless hub for that wireless mode. Oh no, I totally broke it. Don't get me started on the cables, we'll get to it. After setting up the 3D scanner, we can see its vlog style form factor, which makes it look very profesh. Great, Great job. job. The scanner itself is equipped with two IR cameras. That's infrared cameras. In the center here is a projector, a video projector. This projects the infrared light these two cameras are capturing. And right here, just offset from the center, is a RGB camera that is recording the color information that will then be stretched on top of your three-dimensional model. Creality Scan is the software used to capture your 3D models. And it can be downloaded at the Creality website. If you're looking for the mobile version, it can be found on the appropriate app store. When using the phone, the Wi-Fi wireless hub is available, allowing you to use this scanner wirelessly with your phone. Uh, or you can just connect it to your phone with a cable. Let's give the Creality Ferret Pro Scanner a challenge. Let's scan three things. One, my face. Two, a piece of Lexan. And three, an RC part. I think that's a great way to test how well this scanner will do. Let's go. Now, before we start scanning, we need to get one thing straight. This scanner is a tool, one that can be mastered. Once we understand its limitations, we can serve up the best possible conditions to get the best scans. Okay, scan. Let's see here. We're going to do face. Then we're going to do, yeah, geometry, texture. I don't care. Color. Yeah, let's do color just to see what it looks like. Uh, turntable. No. Uh, okay, new scan. All right. Okay, we can kind of see it's working. You can see here it says move farther, which is interesting. It wants me to move further away. Uh, let's see, I'm thinking you probably would rather, yeah, it's probably got to be like this close. Oh yeah, okay, we're starting to see something. All right, I'm going to hit start and I'm going to try not to move my face. Here, wait, you know what? Wait, hold on. Hold on, give me a second. It's really cold coffee. And there's babies crying outside. That's great. I love when that happens. Okay, we're gonna 
We're gonna try our best here. Are you ready? It took four minutes, so four minutes to scan what I'm about to show you. Um, let's, you know, let's check it out. Let's check it out. It's pretty sweet. We're now creating a 3D model from that point cloud, and uh, it's also going to do color mapping and stretch over a JPEG and create its own sort of uh, texture map, specifically to make this model look exactly like I would, you know, in real life, which is pretty cool. My computer is no slouch and this thing is taking forever. My phone doesn't work at all. So keep that in mind if you're looking to purchase one of these things, you're gonna need a newer phone, something that can handle the processing. My phone, which is an S10, uh, S10 Samsung, it just can't, it will just crash every time. It just can't handle uh, the processing. My computer can't, oh my God. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, other than that little wonky eye there and my big ear, it looks, oh shit, it looks pretty good, eh? Good gravy. I mean, it's pretty good. If I got somebody else to scan me, uh, this would probably turn out quite, quite well. But, uh, you know, you can see like my shoulders were doing weird things um, as we were scanning and that's why we've got some like kind of offsetting you know I, I was moving my my arms around and it still managed to pick up quite a good freaking model which I mean that's pretty cool yeah that's pretty freaking cool I would say yeah I would say that this is a, a success let's export it out as an OBJ uh, file and we'll bring it into mesh mixer and we'll see kind of how it looks in a program that is designed to uh, modify uh, you know, 3D 3D objects. Let's do that. I mean, it worked out pretty well considering that I was scanning myself and my hands were doing all these weird things and the shoulders kind of got messed up. Um, in order to make this particular model 3D printable, you're gonna have to manifold it. You have to make it, you know, fill with water. You, get, you have to have a model that uh, has no holes. And I find that with 3D scanning, especially the IR 3D scanning, it uh, it definitely has holes. There are just, there are holes. It's, it's, it's all right. It's just, uh, you can see where I blinked or did something or the scanner kind of had uh, a little bit of an issue with, uh, yeah, with just uh, offsets. Uh, because I was scanning my own face and I couldn't keep as still as I would have to to get a really good scan. This is challenge number two. This is a RS200 clear Lexan body. I don't expect the ferret to do well in this situation because it uses infrared light to create its scans, something that will definitely penetrate through a clear Lexan body. But let's see how it reacts and see how maybe it can give us some usable results. I do know that some people can put some kind of matte spray, matting spray, on the Lexan and uh, maybe sacrifice their body or paint it on top of this protective coating in order to get better scans. But let's just see how it does in this situation. All right, let's try. All right, take a sip of my... It's cold, very cold copy. New scan begins now. All right, wait, hold on a sec. Yeah, see, it gives you this, okay, let's try it. Let's see what happens. It doesn't look like the car already, so, and it's already red. Well, I'm gonna start again. Yeah, scan, you scan, nah. <laughs> oh, one time I did okay though. Maybe I should start scanning the other way. So let's, let's try it this way. Let's try that. I'm just gonna hold it here for a little bit. Whoa. Oh, it's starting to lose, it's starting to lose it, it's starting to lose it, it's starting to lose it. I'm trying to see if I can get that nose section, you know, uh, just try to get that nose. Oh, insufficient. 
Uh, adjust your IR exposure manually. Ooh, okay. Let's see what we can do. During the scan, I'm adjusting the exposure, the IR exposure. That might help, actually. That already is looking a little bit better. The, the quality of your results are going to depend on the environment and, uh, and you know, oh, it kind of they're hard, eh? We'll see what it what it gives us in the end, but uh, I, I don't have high hopes. I'm getting zero bumper. Uh, the minute we go out of the light, where the light is optimal for this, the camera really starts to lose its position. Let's hit complete. All right, so this is the point map, and you can see kind of like where it kind of got confused, you know? But anyway, let's, uh, yeah, let's finish this up see how good it looks. So this is what it got from the clear Lexan scan. You can see that the color map uh, that is meshed around the 3D object is kind of cheating it. It makes it look like it's much, much better than it is. If we turn off the color, you can start to see exactly how that point cloud um, was was turned into a solid which i guess for a clear lexan bo body this is probably a lot better than i thought it would be in fact i think it's enough if we kept scanning it we would probably have enough uh to, to build a cage in 3d i'm really freaking surprised that it scanned that well uh, considering it's a clear Lexan body and some of that IR was bouncing right through, hitting the ground and coming back. You can't get the bumpers, the, the light, the lighting was just not reflecting enough off of the Lexan to, 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 to bounce back any infrared on the bumper, so we didn't get any of that. But it's definitely enough, it's definitely enough to scan and be able to make three-dimensional cages in CAD using this particular point cloud and kind of rough scan as a template to build things, to build things uh, off of it, to, to, you know, to be able to build interiors, to be able to build, you know, uh, mirrors, add, you know, you could add a whole bunch of scale elements when you have the whole Lexan body scanned in uh, and you have the dimensions perfectly in CAD. That's freaking awesome. I would say that that's probably where I'm gonna use this tool the most is to scan Lexan bodies to be able to get the geometry without having to do a whole bunch of measurements of uh, compound shapes, which is the hardest thing when you're designing for uh, for some for an already existing compound shape. Um, does that make sense? That makes sense. Anyway, let's go on to the next challenge. This is a RPM A arm for a Baja, a HPI Baja. Let's see if we can scan this A arm and get our points and our geometry into CAD by using this IR scanner from Creality. I don't think laying it flat would be a great idea for scanning. I'm thinking we put it up and, and try to kind of hold it up uh, in order to be able to scan all the way around it uh, as well as we can. Let's try it out. Um, so this is it here, the RPM A-arm, and then I've got some plasticine, so we'll use this as a way to prop that up there. All right, let's try it out. So I'm gonna take this stick off because I don't need it. This is quite a small freaking model. Yeah, okay, let's try that. Here we go. The Ferret Pro did a very good job scanning this RPM A arm into the computer. You can see this is an excellent model to bring into any CAD software and use as a template to then find all of your geometry points without having to use a digital caliper and having to measure everything out and you know input all of that into CAD. This is gonna be an easy way to get all that geometry and be able to use it quickly and efficiently, much more efficiently than measuring all these points by hand. The scan of the A-arm worked perfectly. I could trace out the geometries in Onshape using this as a guide, which is exactly what I would want 
this particular tool for. Creality's ferret scanner is really, really good. You gotta temper your expectations if you're after manifolded scans. This thing is not gonna be able to scan something that you will then just right away be able to print. Yo, future K-pop here, that is actually untrue. I took one of my face scans and I put it into Bamboo Labs Slicer. It repaired the model straight from the scanner and I was able to print the full bust. Oh my God, that's terrifying. <laughs> in PLA and it turned out pretty great. I hope that was a good introduction to the Ferret 3D scanner from Creality. This thing is a powerhouse. For us hobbyists that like to design our own RC parts, this is a great reference way to input uh, geometries into 3D without too much pain. That's where all the pain is, is to figure out how to model compound existing compound curves. Yes, if you want one of these scanners, the, the link is in the description. Use my affiliate Amazon link, it really helps the channel. Uh, that would be awesome. This would be a great Christmas present for somebody who's in the hobby who does similar things. Cheers to beers, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to K-Pop RC to see us use this tool more often in our content. And uh, man, stay tuned. Lots of cool stuff happening on K-Pop RC. Oh man, like that STX6 over there that you kind of saw a little bit of what? Lots of stuff, some associated cars also coming through the pipeline. And of course the Drift um, Hilux build that I just came back from the track. And we, yeah, lots of cool stuff, lots of cool stuff. So subscribe. Anyway, K-pop out. We'll see you guys on the next one. Doof.